Greetings, Shark Eyes here back once again. And today I have a hot arrival on my hands and that is the G.I. Joe Classified Series, Robert Grunt Graves. This literally just arrived uh, from Hong Kong and I am about to get stuck into this review. So, let's have a look. You got the loadout up here. We'll have a look at that closely once we get it open. Some fantastic artwork here that shows him using the little data pad that sits on his, his chest here. Got this battle scene uh, in the background with a chopper flying in the back and a crashed one at the front with a good look at the figure. Flip to the side, you will see that he is number 87 and uh, we've got his skills and roles down here which we'll get into in shortly. On the back, another look at the loadout a close-up look at the data pad here and then we've got uh, a close look at I can't tell if that's part of his webbing it looks like it I'm not too sure what what they're highlighting that for but that's essentially what it is and if we look at his skills from left to right we have the foot which indicates foot soldier he's a level one in that the next one is like a clip of bullets and that means light weapons, and here's a one in that. The following uh, icon is a fist, and that is hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he's one in that. And the last one is artillery, which he is one in, which is odd, considering that he is a foot soldier, and he doesn't come with any kind of explosive ordnance. So, yeah, but there you go. Maybe you can uh, man some kind of uh, Joe uh, add-on vehicle that might be coming down the line for the vamp or something. So that is the packaging. Let's get stuck into the figure. I'm pretty excited about this one. Really looking forward to seeing it all kitted out with the extra head and all that sort of jazz. So we'll just dump him out there. Let's have a look at the figure there. And for once, it's going to stand up straight. You probably notice I'm doing this review uh, from the other side of my flag, and that's because I'm currently working on that display space that you see over here where that gap is. And hopefully by tomorrow, I'll have some new cabinets in there. All right, so let's we'll pop him to the side for a second. Let's get stuck into the, uh, into the weaponry and accessories. Robert Grunt Graves, number 87, as I mentioned before. Standard cardboard footlocker with a handle that doesn't work. Legal mumbo jumbo and the old baggie inside. Really need to mute this part because the noise annoys me. I'm not too sure if it annoys any viewers, but try to do this as quick as possible so it's not rustling. I've got a bag of chips in my hand. All right, we'll start with the M16, or AR, depending on your take on this. Now, the old uh, gummy weapons, with this one, it's actually quite firm. I don't know if you can hear this, but it's not as jelly-like as some of the previous ones, like with the eel, for instance, which you would have seen in my last video if you watched that. Um, but with that said, there is a bit of curvature to the barrel, which will have to be heated up. But this is a nice looking weapon. Uh, detail wise, it's, it's, it's relatively basic, but you know, you got the scope on there and standard sort of stock. Some nice uh, grip on the handle. Now there's a clip here, so we we'll, might as well take that. Very basic looking. See, we'll pop that in there and get this looking a little bit better. That just slides in like so, and it fits quite snug. It obviously, gives the weapon its necessary uh, ammunition for ready for battle. So yeah, that's that. All right, next weapon. This is more in line with the traditional. Uh, laser rifles that you would have seen in the G.I. Joe cartoon. It's a nice touch adding it to this this figure, especially considering you know he's an OG character from the 82 line. Um, this weapon, 
Again, a slight amount of bend, but it's not gummy. It is also quite, quite firm. Got the green overlay on the, or deco on the, on the stock here. Which might be a bit dark to sort of see it, but it's there. It's a nice piece. It'd be cool if they release these in an accessory pack in the future, so you could kit out all your Joes rather than buying, I don't know, 20 grunts. So yeah, that's that. Next weapon, sidearm, standard kind of uh, revolver. Nothing spectacular in terms of the detail, but good to give him another little weapon to put him into battle with. He also has a knife. Again, not really reinventing the wheel here. Very standard. The blade's nice and shiny. It's quite firm. And then we will go to the backpack. Quite basic. Um, some nice detail across the pockets here and the clips. Obviously you've got uh, points here to attach the weapons to, which we'll have a look at later. The back, again very basic, but looks like it'll fit quite flush on the figure, which is nice. Underneath, nothing there. And on the top, just the straps, basically. Alright, you've got your standard field issue helmet. Uh, reminiscent of the ones that come with Rock and Roll and Breaker. Um, which is good, a bit of symmetry in the line like to see that again uh giving off that og aesthetic from 82 doesn't want to sit flush but it's quite nice but this is the real gem the helmet the second helmet to give your figure a steel core steel brigade steel core brigade steel brigade core whatever you'd like to call them look um gold paint across the eyes, goggles there. Some nice silver paint decos across the front grille. The back, kind of basic. Still quite nice. All right, now back to the figure. And something different, they've gone to plastic ties here, no more um, string, so to speak. So let's see how easy it is to get him out. Might just cut those away, it might be a bit better. Let's just see. Yeah, let's go like this. It should just pop off very easily. Yep. Remember kids, don't cut yourself if you're using sharp implements. His feet are quite fastened in, so we might just Lay him flat for a minute. All right. There's a look at the art again, like on the front and the spine. Very nice. All right. Now let's have a look at the figure. All right. So face sculpt wise, that's grunt. It's a damn sight better than Falcon. We'd probably make a, a decent Falcon head as well. Um, there's a little flip down data pad. As you can see the deco in there, or tampo I should say. And across here, if you look closely, you'll see that it says L4 Graves. If you wanted to army build these, of course, you would have to um, use some uh, nail polish remover or acetone to get that off. He's got the st the Joe Pro, as like people like to call them, for communication purposes. This sits up quite nicely and folds down very easily. It doesn't look like it'll get loose, but over time, who knows? Some ammo pouches here. Sheath for the knife up here. Flip him around. He's got back holster there the sidearm and another little spot there um, I'm guessing you could maybe put the clip in there from the M M16 or the AR what do you want to call it 
Looking at the legs, he's got a pouch here. It's non-functional. And then he's got another one here, which is falling down off the thigh, which requires pushing up. Have a look at the hands, gloved hands, there and there. He's also got some detailing here and also here. Boots are quite nice. It's a nice figure. I really like it actually. Cool. All right, let's do some flexibility tests here. Oh, back leg is very stiff. I can't bend that up without oh, nah, putting some force into that. That's going to require some heat. Oh, same with that one. That one does not want to move. All right, so the legs are quite tight. It's got the drop down hips there, and they're sitting flush. Ab crunch. Ab crunch is there, but it's inhibited by the webbing. And if you notice then when I, I touch that, it's quite, I could feel like that would come loose over time. Like see how it's just sitting in there. So be careful if you're trying to pose him and don't pull on that because you could uh, warp the connection point. Head swivel, nice and stiff. You can look, look down, look up. Let's get him into a T pose. Arms are, are stiff, but they click into place quite nicely. I like the legs. I'm just going to give them another. Yep, yeah, no, they do not want to move. So, yeah, that is his capabilities or limitations, depending on how you want to look at it in terms of uh, movement. These things keep falling down. They really need to figure out a better way for these to stay fixed into place because they are quite annoying. He stands quite easily. Excuse all my other classified figures off to the side there. Just put them back here so you can have a look. No issues there with him standing upright. So let's get him geared up. backpack on first it with the webbing as you can see there is a little bit of resistance but it does sit in there quite snug helmet helmet sits flush All right, I'll pop that knife up in here Goes in easily. Holster back there. Looks pretty good. Let's see how well he holds his rifle. Hands didn't have a problem getting that, that in at all. Let's see how we go with the trigger finger. Oh, that was very simple. His arm here, his arm joint here is a bit stiff. That just required a bit of a bit of a push. But yeah, he looks great. I'm glad I've got a, another one of these on the way. I probably should have got an, an extra one because having a couple of these as troop builders would be great. And he'll look great with uh, Big Ben with his gas helmet or mask, I should say, on. So let's try the steel core helmet and see how that looks. Actually, it's not a helmet, I don't think. It isn't. It's actually a head, my bad. So we'll just pop that on there, like so. Should click into place pretty easily. Yep. The neck is exposed. 
So it would have been cool if it, if it came dropped down a little bit further, but it looks pretty good. Let's, let's pop the other weapon on him. This one's a bit trickier to get in. Just bear with me. There we go. Oh, his backpack's just fallen off. But we'll just... See, this is the problem with the webbing. There's the same with the Range Viper. That peg doesn't go all the way in because of the webbing. But that's how he looks with the laser rifle. Close for you, there you go. So it looks pretty tough. If those legs were a bit more flexible, I'd be able to get him into a pose. But as you can see, I'm really struggling to bend that. It's almost like they're glued into place, which they aren't, of course. They just, as I said earlier, require some heat. But yeah, cool figure. Very cool, like, for filling out the Joe ranks. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. So let's see how he looks next to Big Ben with the mask on. Dynamite. As a troop building combo, you could definitely like do a lot with these in terms of action figure photography and also, you know, just even displays on your shelves or in your cabinets. Um, they really flesh out the Joe um, team. You know, and of course, you can you could have one uh, with a grunt head and one with the big Ben head leading a platoon of these guys. It's fantastic. Yeah, Hasbro deserve applause for that. Uh, so, in wrapping up, like, this this figure is a standout for me. I am, um, I'm really, as I said, I'm really excited that I got him. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting a couple more. Um, they'll look great. You can't beat, like, the OG military aesthetic. So, in summary, um, with the accessories and the extra head um, and the, the ability uh, for world building. This is a, a five shark rating for me. Um, so yeah, and if you haven't watched the Big Ben review, you can go back and have a look at that as well while you're here. Uh, if you enjoyed this review, uh, please hit the like button and uh, while you're at it, hit subscribe. I'm only new to YouTube, but I've got more reviews coming. Uh, this isn't the only figure that arrived today. I definitely uh, got some cool stuff. So stay tuned. Um, turn notifications on while you're here so you don't miss anything. And have a great day.